All right, thanks, David. Yeah, thanks for having us here, and we're really excited to talk about our projects uh, and kind of the progress we're making. And so, yeah, I'll be talking about forums projects today. There's some interesting reading if you want to take the time. And so, yeah, we're a kind of a mixed company, so we're mostly focused in uranium, but we're a critical minerals company. So we also have copper assets as well as cobalt, cobalt nickel as well. So dabbling in all that, especially when uranium declined really bad there in 2019. And so this is our value preposition. Uh, so we're, we're a discovery company. We're hoping to be a big discovery company. And so right now, primarily in uranium, uh, and that's our biggest focus. And so we have nine drill-ready projects in the Athabasca Basin. And then our new exciting project is in the Thelon Basin. So, and we believe it's the next Athabasca. It's kind of the frontier of uranium, we hope, in like, um, Yes, talking about, you know, a frontier area that we'd like to get some real good progress in. And then copper is another big part of our portfolio, and that's at Janus Lake, a sedimentary hosted copper system. And so the technical team, the main part of the technical team, of course, is Rick Mazur, President and CEO. So he's been the founded forum in 2004, so we've been around for quite a while. And then I'm pretty new, so I started just in October of last year. Um, but I did spend a lot of time in uranium previously, so I worked with Cameco and, and mostly up in the Thelon Basin, but have a pretty good understanding of unconformity deposits, especially kind of the structural aspects and kind of digging in that way. And so now I'll talk about the uranium uh, projects we have. And so, basically, this is the big plug, of course. There's, there's only three basins in the world, especially in stable jurisdictions, um, so that have high-grade economic uranium deposits, the unconformity style. And so you have the Athabasca, of course, uh, and then also the MacArthur Basin in Australia, and then the Thelon is the next one, kind of the sister basin to the Athabasca that's just been very underexplored. And so, again, we have a good portfolio. We have nine drill-ready projects in the Athabasca Basin, mostly on the periphery. And then in the Thelon Basin, we acquired ground formerly held by Cameco in the blast boom. So when they were working there, and I was working there, uh, from 2005 to 2012. And it's adjacent to the Kigavik uh, project, which is owned by Arano primarily, as well as Denison and UEC. And so here's uh, just a kind of an overview of our portfolio. So here's the Athabasca Basin, and you got our projects there in blue. And so one of the things in 2023, we we're drilling at our Wollaston project, which is kind of right on the, the east side by Wollaston Lake. And then we have three option agreements with Arano. So Arano, that's a fur island, kind of the mid-upper part of the Athabasca Basin. Sassy Gold. Uh, is uh, optioning High Rock, which is kind of by the Key Lake area, a really prospective trend south of Key Lake. And tr the new one is the Grease River Project, and Traction is optioned that recently. And again, that's kind of up by Fur Island. It's on the Grease River Shear Zone. And then other option discussions are underway. And so our Wollaston project is 100% forum. Uh, it's very well located. It's right along the edge of the Athabasca Basin. It's along the main road that goes up to Points North. And it's within 30 kilometers of the McLean Lake and the Rabbit Lake Mill within the Wollaston Domain Rocks. So a really good structural corridor to look for high-grade uranium. This is just a bit of an overview of what we've completed to date. And so one of the big things this winter is we did pretty much a project-wide ground gravity survey to kind of on the main uh, conductive trends to help us drill target a bit better. So that's what the image on the left. As well as we drilled about 2,000 meters. And so really digging into the geology, testing some of the, the kind of more interesting areas that we drilled in 2022 around the gizmo area grid. And so we kind of focused in on there. And basically with all this work, we're really just working on target selection for the following years. I think we have a really good understanding now of the geology of the area and the structures that we need to target 
and so we'll be honing into those more exciting areas either in the summer or onward. So now into the Thelon Basin. So this is just to locate you. So again, we're up, up in Nunavut, and the closest community is Baker Lake, uh, and it's connected to the ocean. You can bring barges in, but the rest of the project is all very frontier, all no road access, all helicopter supported. So when we were up there last, Cameco spent roughly about 50 million on the project, and we made two major discoveries, plus a discovery of a really interesting showing, as well as many other target areas that I really didn't get to get to in any um, big way, but always wanted to get back to. Unfortunately, in 2016, Cameco decided to, to focus more on the Athabasca, it was the, the, the times, and pull back into the Athabasca, so the Thelon project went into care and maintenance and was eventually lapsed. So Forum really took this opportunity in the last few years in 2021 and staked it essentially for 165000 after all that money was spent. So we're really just starting where Cameco left off and where I left off essentially. And so this is just kind of a bit more into the area. So we have Kigvik is consists of three deposits. Um, consisting of about 133 million pounds is in the ground there as mineable reserve at about 0.54%. Uh, we have all the property basically surrounding it, but the big area is the stuff to the west, and that's what Cameco held and what I was in charge of exploring back when I worked for Cameco. We drilled 36,000 meters during that time, mostly at the Tadigak and Kavik areas, which are essentially just to the west of there. Um, and they were the areas that we found the, we had two discoveries. And Tadigak is the big one that we'll be focusing on, and it is five kilometers from Morano's 59 million pound Andrew Lake deposit, which is kind of in the south end of their lease area. So we're in green, Morano's in orange. And this is just a zoom in into the main Tadigak area that we plan to focus on. And so, Really, only the southwest end of this anomaly has been drilled. Uh, we have a few sporadic holes throughout the rest of it, which all showed really good alteration or very weak mineralization. But basically, the southwest is all that's been delineated to date. And so we've done kind of an in-house, non-compliant 43101 resource on that. And we've come up with about 7 million pounds, conservatively, at about 0.61%. So very similar to what you see at the Aranos Kigovic zones. But essentially, this whole anomaly, so this diagram here is basically a big gravity anomaly. So big gravity, low, big alteration system is 1.5 kilometers long, and we've only drilled maybe about 300 meters of it. And so really, we want to get into there and, and figure out how many more pods are along these structures and, and build up the resource. And given the size of this anomaly, we really think that it could be on the same magnitude of at least what Arano has. So the Andrew Lake deposit is their largest one, and it's about 60 million pounds. So we think we could sleuth that out at the very least, if not more. And just some pictures of the mineralization. Again, the grades are very similar to what you get in the Athabasca, uh, very structurally controlled. And now on to our energy metals portfolios. That's a copper, nickel, cobalt. Uh, really all I'm going to talk about here is our Janus Lake to, uh, zone. And so again, this is kind of in the south end of the Athabasca, kind of along the same stratigraphy. It's in the Wollaston group, which is similar, is the rocks that hosts at least the mineralization in the eastern part of the Athabasca. But anyways, you're in more of the upper stratigraphy. And so Rio Tinto was here and drilled both 39 holes for $14 million. So quite a bit of work was done on this area. This map here is the mag image and kind of blown out to the main areas of copper mineralization. It's a sedimentary hosted copper um, system, but it's within more cooked up rocks. So it's the Wallace and Domain, so it's been slammed by the Trans Hudson, so it's quite folded and it's metamorphosed. Anyways, they did a huge program, obviously spending that much money, um, but as a result, they have a fully permitted camp and fuel in place uh, that can just get back in and, and working this area again. So the main areas, of course, are Jansom, Janus, Kaz, and Rafuse, and they can use a lot more work. 
And yeah, I guess I'm a little early, uh, but <laughs> just blasted through that. Anyways, this is, uh, this is our tale of two basins, plus some energy metals on the side. And yeah, we think the Thelon is a really good frontier area. Like, we think that this is a company maker, this project. We already have seven million pounds in the ground or more. And we really just have to build that. And what I didn't get into is that there's also a lot of blue sky potential. And so actually, I mean, what we think we can find up here is maybe the next MacArthur River or the big deposits um, that haven't been found in the Thelon Basin because you just don't get that sustained exploration that you do in the Athabasca Basin. And so that's our big driver there. And then as well as, you know, Janus just needs to be explored more. Uh, Rio Tinto just did a lot of wide spacing. And, and it's structurally hosted, it's not a standard uh, sedimentary copper, so it, it, you need someone who's gonna really look at the geology and, and uh, work out the actual potential there. <laughs>